So my topics, my talk is going to be a little bit lighter than Boljean's, although it's actually a lot of it is based on um, Bayesian networks. Is okay. So I'm going to talk about uh, a little bit about causality. Uh, switch a little gears, uh, and to do that, just we'll talk a little bit about correlation first, um, and then we'll see where that gets us. And I'll have to remember to stay still. All right, so correlation, right? It's it's basically a statistical relationship between two random variables, right? And so here's just a, a whole smattering of different types of relationships you could have, um, and I think the the number here is the Pearson's coefficient. So how well does uh, are those are those linearly related to each other? Um, and so you can see, you know, traditionally, we're you don't see my. Uh, let's see if this works. So traditionally, you know, we're we're used to seeing relationships between, you know, nice relationships like that. In the concrete industry, I mean, you get this all the time, right? That's that's our normal one. Um, but there are also different relationships here. Um, some of these are more kind of uh, thought experiments to test, you know, how things can be correlated. What does it mean to be correlated, right? Those kind of things. Um, so I think we, we kind of understand fundamentally this, this correlation idea. Now, pizza. The big thing about this is that correlation does not imply causation, right? Just because two things are related to each other doesn't mean that it, one causes the other. Okay, so there's a study here, mozzarella versus pizza restaurants. Mozzarella per, uh, eaten per capita per pizza restaurants. This one we can kind of make some sense out of, right? There are more pizza restaurants, there's more cheese getting out there, and we can't help ourselves, right? We'll just go after those, those pizza things. By the way, so definitely look at, uh, you know, in Boston there are some good pizza places. These are kind of the big name. Some of these are, are not, you know, not the best, but definitely look around. Uh, Little Italy is a great place. All right, so now along the lines of this correlation, another thing that we can do is just start correlating this to other things. So mozzarella versus PhD engineering. PhD degrees uh, allowed per year, right? And you can see there's a relationship there. The, the uh, R squared is 0.8. It's not great, but it's there, right? Um, now, whether now we start to really ask our question: Is this really causing? Is one thing causing the other, right? Um, do us as engineers, PhDs, consume that much pizza that we're we're changing how much mozzarella is getting uh, consumed? I don't know. Maybe. Um, but we just have to be careful um, as we look at this. Because uh, maybe at the last one we're comparing the engineering to the pizza restaurants. All of these have R squareds of something that's reasonable, especially if you're considering concrete data. Um, but the real question is, is there any real relationship here? Is there any causation happening uh, between these? All right. I'm from, I'm, I live in Boston now, so we have to talk about the Patriots, I'm sorry. Um, but one of the ways to look at these is through causal maps, right? These are really, it's really kind of fun to put these together. All right, so the big thing that's going on right now, since Brady's gone, won someplace else, Belichick and the Patriots aren't looking so good, we keep asking ourselves, hey, who was responsible for this? Was it Belichick the coach? Was it uh, Brady the quarterback? Um, and you can start to put some of this together. So what this, what this map basically says here is that, well, there's a possibility that Belichick taught Brady, and Brady also influenced how well the team did. Or maybe it's just Belichick and mostly him with the defensive scheme that he has, right? Um, but two things happen right away when you start to look at these diagrams. The first is that this starts to depend on your knowledge, all right? Think about this in the context of, of all the talks that happened today. You are the experts. And you can start to impart, hey, there's a directionality to these relationships. It's not just uh, these are, are, are related, but maybe there's a causation that's happening here. All right, so this domain knowledge, your knowledge, is really important to, and is taken into consideration in what, what I'll be talking about today. Um, the other thing, too, is that it's very easy to see where the confounding variables are, right? So in the confounding, I mean, you know, there's two ways to get, two paths to get here. You're going through another um, uh, uh, variable that's there, right? So highlighting confounding variables—that's a—that's a big thing. 
All right, so uh, basically what what has happened is that people, and, and one of these people is, is Judea Pearl, and there's, there's a whole bunch of teams uh, around this. He wrote a really accessible book called The Book of Why. All right, it's relatively recent. I, I highly recommend it. It's a, it's a great book. But he talks about um, a lot of the knowledge that has gone together, essentially builds on Bayesian networks, um, takes it to the next level. Uh, and so how this works is essentially it informs, you inform the model. Um, they identify something that's called an estimate, right? This is what we're interested in estimating. Um, we can estimate that causal effect through this, uh, the math that he has generated with, uh, that's built on a lot of other people. And it's used in this idea of controlling the flow of the data. All right, so if we go back to the, the last, the last slide. That, you know, when you look at this, there's ways statistically to control how the data flows through this model. Um, and so that's some of the things that him and, and him and his group have done. Uh, so really nice work on this. It's basically a collection of what he calls do calculus, right? So it's a do function, which I, it really introduces a new concept in, in, uh, that, that gets uh, rolled up with statistics. The other part of this is refuting the estimates is essentially your, your validation part, and it's a little bit different than traditional machine learning. Um, and we talk about that later. Uh, but, I, but either reading this book or going, there's uh, Python packages that are all put together that do all of these things for you, which is really nice. Uh, but the benefits of these things is that correlation is usually down here where you're trying to figure out, hey, well, what do I see here? All right, what's, what's uh, related to what, not necessarily what causes it. But as you go through this process, you're able to do higher level thinking here. And so one of them is, is called intervention. All right, so it's hard to see here, but it's, hey, what if, I, what if I had done this? Or what if I do this? This is how the situation is with all of the data. What if I said, hey, instead of, uh, I'm going to take some examples here. Let's say I have a bunch of truck drivers. Instead of having this truck driver, what if I switch to the other? How does that affect the rest of the system? What, what could you expect from a, a probabilistic standpoint? You kind of see where the Bayesian stuff comes in. Um, and then the, the higher level here is the counterfactuals, where it's essentially what, if, what would have happened if I had used this method instead of that method. All right, so it's very interesting um, thought experiments that you can do with statistical backgrounds on this that can give you some confidence in where you're going. All right, so just the example problem that I'll go through here, and it'll be r relatively quick, but what I'm looking at here is what causes idle time at the job site. So the concrete, deliver, uh, the concrete industry is essentially a delivery industry, right? We take a perishable item, milk, and we deliver it and make sure it doesn't go bad along the way. All right, so you're batching concrete, you leave the plant, you get to the site, discharge your concrete, and you return to the plant. And your truck needs to do this over and over if you want to make money. Um, so the part that I'm talking about is really the time between you arrive on site and the time to discharge. And so the time here is really important, right? Because it's, you, again, you want to make as many deliveries as you can. Uh, and so when you think about this, uh, just from a traditional sense, well, what are the things that could be maybe affecting this? Um, so down here, I think the central questions is, are, are, is the truck ready to pour? From the contractor side, am I ready to let the truck pour? Um, and then Murphy's Law here. So pump breaks, uh, the, the ground is muddy, the uh, formwork people didn't show up. Um, but that's essentially what we're looking at here. And so how we're going to try to capture this is there's slump adjustments made. All right, so if you get to the site and I, they ordered an eight, but you get there at a six, six inches slump, you're going to have to make that adjustment. That causes time, right? Increases time. Um, also, truck congestion. So if you have a bunch of trucks there and not everyone's ready to pour, that can back things up. And then just some random jo job site delays. I'm going to, I'm going to, I keep this here now, but I'll get rid of this for, for right now, just for, to keep things a little bit simple. Um, but you can definitely kind of understand where these are going. Notice that I didn't put any arrows here. I'm just saying, hey, all of these things affect it. So if I'm making a traditional model, just throw it all in and then see what comes out. All right, so the data behind this, uh, just to talk very briefly. So we have an in-transit measurement system. Uh, it's basically IoT sensors on the drum. Uh, it measures how the energy re required to rotate the drum and the speed, so it's kind of like a rheometer. 
send all that information up. We have this for uh, over 100 million cubic yards of, of concrete have gone through the system. So billions of data points, slump temperature, GPS, all this kind of fun stuff. So that's kind of what we're going to build on top of this um, to see what we can kind of get out of this. All right. Now, just to be a little bit more detailed, so now I'm going to, I'm going to try to start losing you guys. Okay? Uh, when you break those things out, okay, those three different things, and it's really just two, slump adjustments and then uh, uh, your congestion at the, at the job site. So you can, you can imagine the driver might have an impact on this. Um, the contractor might have an impact. Maybe they're changing the slump target. Um, the slump targets are going to be big. Environment, so if it's really hot out, are you losing slump? Are you going to have to adjust more? Uh, traffic can affect your uh, congestion. Fluid ads that you're making on here. Uh, and even the plant. So if the plant batched too low, it didn't get, and the slump is low when it gets to the site. Again, you'll get all of this stuff. All right. So I'm just looking at a small subset of data uh, from us, just looking at one producer, it's about 20, 000, or 19,000 loads over, over three months. Um, I basically did some, a few little tricks here. So our slump versus target arrival. So again, if you ordered an, an eight, you got there at six, you're minus two. All right, if, if you ordered a six and you got an eight, then you're plus two. So I basically just turned this into true or false. Hey, did, did you meet it or not meet it? Um, the, you're able to instruct these trucks to manage automatically or manual. Um, so we made sure to keep the instructions constant. We did a little bit with the outliers. Um, but mainly what we're trying to see is what causes, what's the responsible party? Is it, is it the contractors, the environment? What's causing uh, this time on site? All right. So before I get to the, the causal kind of method, um, just to go back to the traditional method, you can throw this all into a linear uh, regression um, and, or, or even a random force and try to get something called an importance factor. So, it's, so it's, it's kind of saying, hey, how important is this factor on the total thing? Um, and you can see that these don't match exactly. Um, and you can kind of almost reason any of these could be real factors. But that's the difficulty of all this is, hey, how are you, how can we impart our domain knowledge to kind of figure out what really is the, the source of this knowledge? All right. So you'll see here contractor driver over here, it's congestion and, and water. Again, on this side is a linear regression. The other one's a random forest. I hope everyone that's not in machine learning realizes we've talked about so many different models and methods today, right? There's so much out there, um, which makes it fun for us, but also kind of scary sometimes. Um, so if you want to like make someone uncomfortable, be like, how'd you choose that model? How do you know what model to choose? Because we usually have to do it all. All right, so now we're going to go to the, the causal stuff. We're turning this and we're parting our domain knowledge on it, and then we're going to see what, what we get. All right, so now you see all the arrows in this. So for example, contractor can scream at a driver. The driver, next time he comes around, is going to keep water in his drum and then change your, your, your target. All right. Or the driver's going to wash down his truck, add a bunch of water, and then can change things. Right. Concrete temperature we talked about could affect slump life, could affect, affect this. Um, traffic affects tr uh, truck co uh, congestion. The instructions that we have determine whether or not you're allowed to add water. Like we said, we made those constant, so you'll see those have no impact. Um, and then uh, all the water that you're at, so the fluid adds that you have every time you make an add, it requires water or time and water, um, but that'll increase the time on site and the truck congestion also. So essentially what you do is all of these columns are data that we have, um, and so you would put it into the system. Uh, it would go through those four steps, right? Finding the estimates, uh, finding the estimate, and then refuting the stuff. The refute is the validation, and then it'll throw back and say, okay, why don't we take a look at what the influencing factors are on this. And one of the, the ways to do this is basically it's what they call an arrow strength in the, in the program. Um, so the arrow strength for this, you can see that the vast majority of the influence is coming from truck congestion onto the time site. Time site. All right, this is for this, cus, the, uh, this producer, this time frame, so just keep all of that in mind. This is not to be generalized in, in any way. 
but this can make sense to us, uh, and more importantly for the producer, you can go and have the conversation. You can tell them, hey, instead of spending time yelling at your people, maybe it's time to have a, a conversation with your dispatch or the contractors and see if you can iron that out a little bit more. All right, because contractors love to have trucks lined up. They don't want to be waiting for things, so, so this, um, this makes sense, right? Um, but notice that, you know, I only have it for these two things. It's not propagated through the whole thing. So this arrow strength is really just good at what your, uh, uh, basically your, your parent, uh, uh, factor is for this. So you can kind of go through this and, and you can see, pick different nodes here and have different, um, you know, things. So if we go one up, truck congestion was a big one. So what's causing the truck congestion? You can see there's influence from both the contractor and the plant. Okay, so again, conversations to have um, around this. All right, and so we can do we can do a bunch of these and see what uh, what you have here. Um, just uh, is it this one? Let's see. This uh, yeah. So this one, this one's interesting in terms of you know who's influencing the driver. All right, um, and so some of the things that you can do with this is is dig deep down and see what who are the contractors that that are that you need to have a conversation with. All right, so it's it's pretty interesting to see all this. Uh, again, we're only looking node by, by node, so you can do something else to, to figure out what's they call it an intrinsic uh, causal influence. And so this kind of rolls all of this up nicely, and so you're able to kind of uh, Pareto this, what's, what's causing most of your issues here. Um, and so this matches what we just talked about, um, but it gives a little bit more uh, information around this and you can calculate confidence intervals as, as Oljan was talking about and, and some other things on that. Uh, just for those of you that have been here the whole time, so this is another one of those dolly images. I just said congested concrete trucks at the site. This is AI generated and it probably looks great from that perspective. The more you look at it, the more you're like, what is going on? Um, cause it's, it's, this one looks like a truck that's backwards sharing the same drum as another. I don't know. But, you know, it's, it's crazy what they can do. All right. So now that, so in the last few minutes, I just want to go through the digging deeper. This is all cool and you can have conversations in the, in some of that. Um, you can get to that in some ways through statistics as well, right? And essentially what, what the, the, um, what this do I kind of logic is, is reduce it to statistically, um, uh, ways that you can handle it with statistics based on your knowledge. All right. Um, so digging deeper. So this is one of the, the, this is the time on site distribution just as is. Um, and like I said before, you can have some interventions. You can ask some questions about, okay, well, what if I just set truck congestion to zero? All right. Based on all of the other distributions and how things are related, you can go back and give an estimate. Again, these are all estimates. Um, but you can give an estimate based on those statistics to see what would happen. So you'd see that the average time on site goes from 11 to 9. Right? So and that makes sense for us. Um, and then lastly, you can also say, hey, what if I uh, only use this contractor going forward? What if I switch contractors? Um, you can see the difference in contractors for this is from 10.8 to 14.3. So this might help you in making decisions of who you work with, right? Uh, someone that's holding your uh, trucks four or five minutes extra every time, that's four or five minutes you're losing your productivity that it could be going and selling concrete someplace else, right? So there's all these kind of cool questions that you can start to ask um, and play around with this. So this is this is a lot of fun to, to kind of think about, but also, again, you know, coming back to, we've talked a couple of times, the physics-based model, that's, that's imparting our knowledge on it. This is another way you can impart your knowledge on what these relationships look like. All right, so with that, I'll take any questions. Hi, Denise. Hi, Nathan. Great presentation as thank usual. You. Uh, thank you. Question, uh, sorry if I miss, how do you calculate the average strengths in that? Uh, in the map, so that's... The average strength, sorry. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So that's, that's part of the algorithm. It's essentially looking at, um, 
what's causing what's causing the variance in that. So, and we're kind of familiar with that. I mean, if if you're looking at um, let's say let's say strength, uh, compressive strength. Sorry, compressive strength, right? And you know, if if you have wide variety, wide variability in your water, that's going to affect the output there. So it's looking at those kind of relationships under the confinement of what you allow, how you allow the data to flow through, right? So it's all dependent on that arrow and then the statistical relationships underneath. And so the, and uh, you know, I totally forgot to say machine learning in this. Um, but uh, in coming, so in each one of the, when it's looking at the relationships, you can use linear regressions, but a lot of times you're using machine learning, especially with data sets like this. So that's also folded into that to figure out what those what those strengths are. Again, those uh, that website, the, just look up do why do why Python. That's that's a that's a good place to start. They have some really nice uh, uh, descriptions of that, and it's it's actually a nice uh, collaboration. Both Microsoft and, and Amazon have worked on that on that uh, package, so it's it's pretty nice. It almost makes it too easy, which is why I was able to talk about it today.